Welcome back to Power Lunch. Stocks are well off session lows when the Dow was down nearly 400 points. And tracking with that, oil is moving off its highs as well. So we're seeing some settling down in markets. Let's bring in John Kilduff, founding partner with Again Capital, and Pippa Stevens, who is here on set with us. Great to have you both along. Pippa, let's just start with a kind of a retracing of what we know, what's happened with crude this hour, and what are you hearing about further escalation? Uh, now that Iran has struck Israel with missiles. So we initially saw prices spike. We saw them get over that 5% level. They have since come back. But I think before talking about today's move, we have to look at where crude has been. It was down 16% last quarter. And so a lot of that is just simply reaction to how much we had fallen. Also, crude positioning had gotten negative for the first time on record. That's going back to 2011. So the market was very short. And then both contracts tripped key levels, WTI on 70 and Brent on 75. So a lot of this was short covering. That's not to say, that's not to downplay today's escalation. Certainly Certainly important, but CIBC private wealth Rebecca Babin told me that if the market actually thought we'd see barrels coming off of the global, uh, you know, economy, we would have been up ten dollars hmm. versus the three dollars we were up at the high. And so, of course, looking forward, the all important question is how does Israel respond? So far, we have not seen any energy infrastructure targeted, even in Iran's ta attack. They did give a heads up this time around. It was a less advanced warning than we saw back in April, but still, we did get advanced warning, and they didn't target any civilian infrastructure. They focused on military infrastructure, all of which she said points to the fact that they don't want this to escalate, meaning that how Israel responds, they really are the wild card now and what could determine the next price direction for oil. Uh, John, why don't we bring you into the discussion here as well? If we talk about the ripple effects, Pippa laid out the price action pretty well. I mean, there, there, wasn't, there was a dramatic response, but it wasn't like a panic in any way, shape or form. What does it tell you about oil prices and their next leg if we couldn't even sustain the move on this, given a direct attack by Iran on Israel? Well, good to see you guys. Um, look, I think the big calculus change here is that Iran is not necessarily the worry for this market that it has been or has represented, I'm going to say, for decades now. Um, and this is twice now where the Iranians have lobbed a, a volley of missiles at Israel and they've all been, we're waiting to see on this last one, but it seems like they've all been shot down again as well. And this is after Iran has seen uh, several now of their top generals uh, killed by Israeli, ac Israeli actions. And this is all they have. So I think it speaks volumes to Iran's lack of an appetite for any kind of region-wide war. They also don't want to risk their nuclear ambitions. Uh, which we know that the Israelis will go after probably one of the first things that there was any kind of meaningful attack uh, on Israel by Iran. So I think at this point, the geopolitical risk premium as it relates to Iran, it's almost a fool's errand to, to get caught up in it and for to think that prices will sustain themselves or to even game out that there will be a, a, a sort of region-wide conflict that ends up with Israel against Iran. I, I think those days are, are officially stamped behind us.